I spent uh, many years in the IT industry, and then I spent three years in the internet business, and I spent eight years at Nissan to develop the IoT of the vehicle. And uh, now I'm working at Intel, but uh, maybe this is my sixth year at Intel. And uh, uh, maybe the based on my experience of the integration of the IT to the vehicle, I'm now developing the automated vehicle for Intel, but uh, located in Japan. So the, based on my experience, I'd like to talk about the uh, future trans sorry, transformation of the industry stru industrial structure. Industrial structure will be changed a lot within the next two, five, ten years. So the, uh, based on my experience, I would like to talk about that. This is, okay, sorry. So the, my agenda here, no? <laughs> my, yeah. So my agenda is like look like look like this, and uh, basically the uh, based on my maybe experience, I mean the maybe developing the automated vehicle will be a very good typical ex example, uh, which explains how the industries will be combined to each other, and also the change the structure, and maybe the. the uh, Top, I mean, the leader of the industry will be changed a lot from, uh, from now. So, then, uh, so now I'd like to start with uh, how to drive a car. And uh, maybe, of course, you know how to drive a car. And uh, for example, this is quite low resolution picture of the Ginza, quite central place of the Tokyo. And uh, if, I, if you would like to make a turn left or right turn at the third crossing street, a crossroad. Uh, maybe you may you may see somewhere some places around here because you can uh, you can tell that this is a fast signal and second one the third one is around there. But uh, finding the third signal is not um, important. And the important thing is that the what, what is the color of the immediate signal? Uh, if it is a red, we have to start stop before the stopping line and. Uh, it's very easy for people to find out the immediate signal, which is uh, very close to ours. But uh, it's very difficult for the computers to understand the uh, total environment and find out the signal. And uh, it's very difficult to point out this is the immediate signal, which is very, very important for us. Because uh, there are four directions of the signals, and sometimes the computers may find a different signal, which is ki kind of vertical, not horizontal. And then vehicle may stop, uh, no, vehicle may go straight uh, with a kind of red signal in front. But so such kind of things could be happened. So the how to solve this kind of a problem is that the, we may utilize the three-dimensional three -dimensional picture or map information, which is a data, kind of a database. And, uh, because on a three-dimensional map may, may tell that uh, this is your immediate signal. So then uh, computers or computers on the vehicle can, uh, do not have to search for the signal and identify the which, which one will be uh, immediate signal. But a map, three-dimensional map may tell that you have to take a look at this segment of the picture. So then, then um, the computer would not have to have a huge uh, computational power to get the right answers. And also the uh, error rate would be much lower than uh, finding out some signals and uh, determining which one which that is red or yellow or green or such kind of things. So then uh, uh, gathering the kind of uh, information from the big, many vehicles to make up a kind of a crowd-sourced information is very important. So the, uh, we have to drive uh, many cars in the road and to detect the uh, real environmental scenes and information of the road. So that, um, yeah, in order to make such a kind of three-dimensional map, uh, we generate, uh, of course, data, but also that we need to have our IoT to send out to the data center. And on the data center side, we have to have a very great knowledge or technology of the deep learning to find out the real structure of the uh, environment. So the, <clears throat> Yes, and uh, still the cars have many sensors, like not only cameras and the uh, riders and radars. Radar is very important nowadays. Radar means that the uh, sensor device may send out the radar, ra 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 laser, yes, laser, laser light beam and find out the 
this direction, there's a kind of object. And then such kind of, uh, yeah, such, with such kind of device, we can tell the three-dimensional picture of a state, object state status of the environment. So the LiDAR is very important. And uh, anyway, the, such sensors will send out the environmental data. And also the, even the ECU, which is uh, quite ma uh, uh, industry specific word, but the ECU means engine control unit or electric control unit, which is uh, embedded inside a vehicle. And uh, they can tell the status of vehicle. For example, the ABS, uh, anti-braking system, is uh, one kind of the uh, ECU. And uh, with that sensor, we can tell uh, there are kind of slippery status in this position or portion of the road. So with gathering such kind of information, we can identify that, uh, that the, with this kind of environment, uh, vehicles have to drive, to drive by themselves uh, with this kind of algorithm, such kind of things. So with su that, such kind of algorithm, which is a software running on a PC or a computers in a vehicle, uh, will drive a car. This is a kind of a total picture or a basic idea how to make an automated vehicle, okay? So the point is that it's easy for people to drive, but it's not so easy for the uh, computer to drive a car. So the, basically the computer or uh, computers on the vehicle has to learn how to drive. But basically it's very difficult to uh, start the learning from the scratch by taking a look at the environment things and uh, by learning about how people may drive. That's, it may be quite uh, Compasses, more, there are many huge drive tests would be required. But initially, we may implement a very basic or typical algorithm like this. Uh, find out the signal and uh, check the kind of color of the signal. And then based on the signal's color, uh, the kind of routing would be different uh, to, you know, to, to stop or go ahead or something like that. But basically, the, this kind of simple program can be written by human being. But uh, this is not enough because there are many cases in the world, and uh, uh, maybe that people cannot list up all the things, all the cases, to find out the way to uh, safely drive through uh, some kind of any situations. So then uh, basically we may implement a quite typical uh, use case or program to go through, but the, after that, the, with this kind of typical program, some cases with typical programs, uh, we, let vehicles to go around a lot. And uh, based on the kind of data which would be picked up from the vehicle uh, by driving through many places, uh, we put some kind of deep learning, and not only deep learning, also, and also deep enforced learning like uh, AlphaGo uh, to find out the kind of how to drive a vehicle uh, without any learning process or basically self-learning process may yield some kind of uh, end result of the sort of uh, softwares. Uh, we, are, we will be using, I mean, uh, be manufacturers to develop the automated vehicle. Such kind of companies uh, utilize this kind of a deep learning which may shows, uh, like, uh, which may looks like this. But I don't explain quite in details, but uh, kind of a uh, philosophy is that uh, we may input many data of the environment and also the picked up some kind of a uh, ECU level of the uh, data, which may tell us uh, driving situations, uh, conditions. Uh, my, by making up some kind of a, uh, um, deep learning learning and with many data, uh, with using a neural network, which is akin to the uh, human brain, we can get some kind of uh, how to drive a car without any education by people or programming by people. Uh, computer by themselves will yield the kind of uh, algorithm to uh, avoid the crashing into the many objects around the vehicle. So that by using a deep enforced learning, we can get some kind of algorithm to drive. And also the, um, during the meantime, we also uh, identify the environmental um, situations by making a, a visual recognition or such kind of things. Even uh, for such kind of visual recognition, we have to implement or input, implement the deep learning to get the real picture of the actual uh, information. Um, for example, a vehicle cannot tell that what is this, but maybe that in order to, uh, in order to make a computer to understand the environment, we have to uh, make a kind of a 
uh, annotation. Annotation, uh, what is this and such kind of things could be uh, translated by a computer to understand how to drive a car. But anyway, the, the end result is that by using a neural network, we will develop the uh, graphical recognition and also the, the vehicle can tell how to drive a car in any place of the world. So the, that is the kind of thing that the robot taxi or robot car or self-driving vehicle has to do uh, to be a self-driving vehicle. By the way, the such kind of development, actually the research and development has been advanced a lot recently, but, and also <clears throat> basically, for example, especially with the uh, European OEMs and uh, uh, United States OEMs and also technology companies uh, spent a lot, invested a lot to uh, act, realize such kind of self-driving uh, yeah, self vehicle or robot taxis, robot cars anyway. Uh, but the, that could be, there has been a huge investment. For example, in the last three, three years, there has been a, eight, sorry, I forgot the uh, English number, but eight billion dollar, trillion, I, I'm not sure, but anyway, huge amount of money, eight trillion dollars or something like that. Uh, so then uh, I have to tell that why those OEMs or technology companies in European and US uh, has spent a lot to invest because uh, there, there could be a quite huge, huge uh, market requirements. So the this is kind of basically the background, background uh, which explains why OEMs and technology companies are now invested a lot, invest a lot to the automated vehicle. And uh, basically the, uh, there are several factors. And uh, one, maybe the first one is a growing global population will be living in uh, urban areas. And it is told, it is said that by 2050, 2050 uh, two thirds of the people will live in uh, urban cities. And uh, once the people may live in uh, urban cities, uh, the incentive to own his or her car will be quite reduced. So then um, people would like to share the cars and there are quite great uh, actual trend in, we can find in China now Anyway, the, yeah, global, this is kind of global trend. And uh, market penetration of the high-speed mobile communication like smartphone is a great effect, uh, kind of a, a, a enabler to realize such kind of a uh, new kind of a transformation. For example, the, you can, you can um, call up the Uber uh, from a star, smartphone, and uh, mm, such kind of Uber type of the uh, implement, implementation of the business is quite different from the uh, historical taxi or vehicle business. And without owning the vehicle, for example, in uh, Uber, Uber didn't, don't, do not have any uh, vehicle as asset. But uh, by using uh, somebody's vehicle, and just uh, Uber is making up kind of, kind of a match making of the people who would like to drive or who would like to uh, offer the driving experiences. They are kind of like SNS, and by matching, just a matching of the people, uh, they can make a business. This is a kind of new transformation of the industry, actually, and uh, such kind of things could be happened on the smartphone, basically, between a uh, uh, customer's smartphone and the driver's smartphone by using uh, IoT and also the data center. So this is a kind of mechanism of the new uh, current business model, and uh, maybe the future, such kind of business model would be expanded. So then, uh, with such kind of uh, um, result of the uh, development of the mobile phone, uh, maybe the people may hail a taxi by the uh, smartphone. And also the such kind of experiences not only happened in uh, advanced countries, but uh, it could be happened. Uh, and now it is happened in uh, uh, advancing countries, and also the uh, not advanced countries would be happened. So that uh, it could be a kind of a global uh, trend of the industry uh, to yes to use the mobile phone mobile phone type of the solution to offer or to provide the new services in the market and it is expanded expanding not only in advanced countries but also for other countries. So then uh, this is kind of a similar thing uh, uh, with what I said and uh, uh, type of the business like Uber and uh, uh, Lyft is a good example which shows the huge types of the transformation, uh, transportation industry. 
And also the, uh, the important thing to eliminate the people is that the cost. The, the currently the cost, uh, cost of the taxi, taxi business, the 70, more than 70% of the uh, cost is for the human being. So that by eliminating the kind of such kind of human cost, uh, the cost of the transportation would be much lower, almost one third or lower than that. So this kind of trend is very important. And also uh, this is kind of a pervasive uh, fact that uh, there would be increasing number of the elderly people. So that in order to provide the lifeline for those elderly people, the driver's taxi or a driver's car uh, would be very important. So that is kind of a, maybe the reasons why we have to invest a lot for this industry. And the next one is the, uh, what, what kind of changes of the industry would be happened. And uh, I can say that the uh, most advanced company in the area of the automated vehicle is Waymo. Somebody says such kind of things uh, in last one hour. But anyway, the, actually, uh, they show a great details about the, what they have been done, and also they implemented a very huge uh, size of the new services without driver. For example, last year, uh, in, in April, they started the kind of uh, totally self-driving or driverless vehicle, but there is a kind of a back, backup driver there. But uh, they started in April that they provide the services with, uh, with a robot taxi. And uh, on May last year, uh, they announced that they have driven, they have driven, uh, Waymo or Google driven uh, not three million miles since the uh, start of the development of the driverless car, uh, which, is in, which is, has happened in 2009. And uh, they driven three million miles. And uh, they announced that in November that they added one million miles at up to that and they get obtained as five mi uh, four million. But uh, after that, within just four months, uh, since they expanded or exceeded the four million, they announced this year that they uh, driven uh, five million miles. So this is quite huge. Uh, no, maybe the second one, uh, catching up for the Google, would not drive, would not, maybe, would not have, did not have any experience to driven uh, more than maybe one million miles, M maybe quite lower than one million. So then, uh, this kind of experience to or test of the public road would be very important asset for them to make actual development of our uh, end result in the market. And uh, <clears throat> yes, and uh, this is not so famous, but famous or quite known uh, fact, but the this quite uh, this type of the vehicle, uh, maybe you know a lot. Uh, it was, it, those type of the vehicle retired totally. And they, I mean, Waymo switched the vehicle to test, make a self-driving vehicle test uh, into the, this type of the uh, Chrysler Pacifica-based uh, automated driving vehicle. And uh, uh, total, I mean, totally, the, uh, this round type of the vehicle has been retired. And, and as, as you said, I showed that just only two are existing, but in the museum. So that this kind of shift has been happened, and uh, this is quite important. And maybe that OEM vendors will take a look this like a kind of a, it's, uh, it's very, um, it, maybe this is a quite, I mean, quite against the kind of a uh, not natural understanding of the vehicle company that they may not abandon the vehicle with such kind of, with a, a, lot, a kind of a volume of the vehicles, uh, abandoned within two, three years. But actually, the, the, this type of vehicle has been uh, replaced with two years. And I think that every two years, vehicles will be depressed. And the vehicle's life, life, life cycle could be shortened from the current uh, more than 10 years, like 13 years, but into the three, two years. Because the, now these vehicles, the utilization rate the percentage of vehicle which is driving in the market would be much higher than owned vehicle. Shared, shared vehicle would run a lot with a huge utilization rate. So then uh, um, maybe every two, three years, the vehicle will be worn out and depressed. So this is a kind of life, life cycle change of the vehicle industry of the future. 
And uh, actually, last year, the three, 600 uh, Pacifica had been a base of the kind of a public road test of the Google. And uh, this year, they uh, announced that they ordered the 20,000 Jaguar yes, to make a drive test in 2018, this year. So such kind of expansion of the vehicle's numbers and also kind of extension of the load uh, or length of the driven load with the autonomous, uh, autonomous, autonomous mode, it makes a great effect or great result, which may be, which may, which may be kind of, with that kind of result, the big company may be able to compare the safety of the fully automated vehicle uh, against or uh, versus the human driven vehicle. So then, uh, with such kind of numbers, we have to we have to get such kind of number to uh, make our evidence that fully automated vehicle would be far superior or far safer than uh, be uh, human driven vehicles. So this is kind of kind of uh, competition. Uh, how to make a uh, ex ex extensional, I mean, expanded uh, test of that uh, public road and also uh, ba basically that maybe you know that there are many accidents nowadays to kill the people with the automated mode. But um, Google is very, uh, thinking very careful uh, delivering experiences and then maybe they may uh, make evidence that the fully automated vehicle can be safe, much safer than human driven vehicles. But anyway, I, I'd like to say that uh, Waymo is uh, quite ahead and uh, no other OEMs could, cannot keep uh, the same, uh, same pace to make this kind of a development in the market. So anyway, <clears throat> and uh, this picture, uh, maybe I have to shorter, I mean, make it shorten. And uh, this is kind of picture beyond the 2020. Maybe that uh, Google Waymo can uh, provide in the market that uh, is uh, automate, to totally automated vehicle like a road taxi. And in before maybe before 2020, this year or that next year. But anyway, the beyond that, the, the they may offer a great new type of the transport po, transportation, and uh, uh, basically that uh, by eliminating a human driver, the cost of that uh, driving would be much lower as a cost. And uh, the also they may offer the kind of a new transportation from the uh, station to my house or such kind of things, which recently or usually uh, people may walk between the station and the house. But anyway, such kind of uh, last one mile type of the lengths could be uh, covered by this type of the uh, self-driving vehicles. But such kind of new type of the solution will be accepted a lot with several reasons, which I explained in previous pages. But anyway, uh, this market, self-driven vehicle market will be grown, I mean, much bigger than maybe usual, may, many people is thinking about. And maybe from the community road, like last one mile, the, they will expand the area to cover with the set of driving vehicle to the uh, much broader areas, like including uh, expressway. A vehicle company may start with the expressway to back to the uh, community road. But so the, maybe the, mm, the kind of, I'm, this, this right hand side circle, circle or the kind of, kind of a, expansion of the current business model of the vehicle companies. But the new, this area, uh, right hand side, will be a kind of a new emerging market as the transportation. And uh, basically it will be growing. Yes, but anyway, I will cut the last. And the total picture of the, the kind of a, uh, solution looks like this. And uh, maybe from the stations to uh, during, uh, within a kind of circle of the 1.6 kilometers, which is the last one mile, uh, the, such kind of driverless robot taxi will cover uh, to offer the uh, transportation of the people. And it's not to, to the, just a commuting people, but also the elderly people may use to uh, go between the hospitals or to make a purchase at the market. So the, uh, in order to, that, that is a kind of solution, but in order to, uh, offer the better solutions, the mobile, mobility service provider or maybe OEM vendors will also uh, start to do that. But anyway, the, the data center to get the much 
uh, great, much better uh, driving algorithm and also the, uh, by uh, gathering the data, uh, the vehicle company or mobile service provider will get a three-dimensional map with, with uh, much more precious information and uh, also dynamic information, what is happening in uh, this place. And also delivery system to provide the vehicle uh, with, uh, within a one, two minutes uh, after the uh, kind of hailing a taxi from a, a smart, smart home. Such kind of delivery system have to be quite efficient. And the efficiency of the delivery system could be a, a resulted in a better cost or better bene profit, profit, yes, out of the business. So the, those three uh, types of the data center will be required, which is driving algorithm and the three-dimensional map and the delivery service. Anyway, this is the kind of data-driven technology. And uh, super, if the company has a superior technology within this side, the company will have a much more great competitivity, competitiveness in the market. So such kind of things will be happen. The vehicle itself is not kind of program or an important thing. A vehicle is just a vessel to carry the people, but the management of this type of the data center where uh, gives the competitiveness of the company in uh, next generation transportation. And uh, this is additional information, but uh, this is a picture which shows that the uh, penetration rate of the sharing services in the market, and it compares among the China, Northwest, uh, North, uh, no, uh, USA, USA and uh, Europe. And, uh, <clears throat> And the green side is that the people may use the uh, sharing service more than um, every day, basically every day. And the purple one says that the more than three times a week they use the sharing service. And the orange portion, I'm sorry, uh, blue which portion explains that <clears throat> people may uh, utilize the uh, sharing service one, more than once a week. And uh, it makes a kind of result that in USA and uh, Europe, the just only 20% of the people will use, may use the sharing service. But the two, basically to my surprise that the almost 50% of the people use the sharing service in United uh, China. But um, um, as, as for my second thought, it is quite obvious because the uh, penetration rate of the vehicle is just only 30% in China. So that, uh, so that uh, people have to ask for somebody to get, give, give a ride or something like that. And uh, by penetrating, penetration of the kind of DD, uh, they make a kind of matchmaking between the people who has and who has not, who do not have. So the kind of, uh, kind of this kind of mobility service operator will be a kind of mandate. And also the additional thought is that, the important thought is that the, uh, maybe in advanced countries, the, uh, owning the car is a fast experience with the vehicle, but in the advancing countries, China, China is advanced, but some, uh, in some regions, it's still advancing countries. But anyway, the, uh, in those advancing countries, the fast experience with the vehicle is share, not own. So then uh, it's very uh, important. So then the uh, vehicle company has to manufacture the kind of vehicle which would be owned or they have to, they have to develop the kind of vehicle which can be shared with the, some kind of operational services. So this is a kind of change of the structure. And uh, an additional thought is uh, this is kind of new ideas which is now quite heavily discussed in, especially in United States. But in the past, vehicle would be developed within uh, uh, three years and uh, uh, three years, they are vehicles are sold as a new car, and uh, still the uh, vehicle may stay in the market for the basically uh, uh, 30, 13 years in case of Japan, but uh, similar to United States, because the utilization rate of the vehicle is just only four percent. But um, once they change the business structure, uh, they would not sell the vehicle to the people um, to own for them for them. Um, if the vehicle company or mobility service company holds the asset of the vehicle within that company and uh, provides a kind of a mobility as a sales or a mobility as a kind of a, um, source of the revenue, the business model will be uh, quite, quite entirely changed and uh, new, new pattern of the sales and manufacturing looks like that. 
look at, like, look at this, the, it could be made into the paper drive or what's, uh, paper use type of the, uh, solution. And uh, once the, uh, the vehicle company or mobility service provider can get the kind of a one, this is a quite, this is not, this is not, I mean, one dollar per kilometer, not one hundred dollar. One dollar per kilometers, and uh, vehicle may drive, may be driven like uh, uh, 130 kilometers uh, within three years. <clears throat> Maybe if the occupation rate, like uh, people or uh, things, uh, to be carried, uh, if, if the kind of utilization rate or occupancy rate with the 50 percent, still the uh, huge money will be obtained. If the uh, company may sell the vehicle, maybe the obtaining the uh, uh, revenue would be just around $25,000. But if the vehicle do not sell the vehicle and carry the vehicle to provide the mobility, uh, they may, this vehicle may gain, obtain the kind of a revenue of the $65,000. So this is quite huge advancement or maybe the profitability will be quite changed and uh, Maybe more, much more profit would be uh, generated by not selling. <clears throat> so the, that is a quite big picture of the change of the market. And uh, this is the kind of picture that, uh, no, but I maybe I do not spend uh, many minutes, but minutes, uh, several seconds. But the point is that the vehicle would not be sold, and the vehicle would be uh, offered uh, to be to be to be shared. And uh, you know to share operation like uh, ICT or uh, like Uber uh, would have to be integrated into the vehicle business. Then the, those two pyramids of the vehicle industry and also the ICT, like a website, web-based business, would be combined. And I, if such kind of things would be happened with the fully automated vehicle with the mobility service, maybe that um, the at the top the. Maybe the company which may provide the services would be in the uh, uh, top of the pyramid. And uh, technology enabler will be coming uh, the, beyond, beside, below that. But uh, if the vehicle company just make or manufacture the vehicle itself, maybe it could be uh, downgraded into the third layer. So this is a kind of a uh, change of the competition and the industrial structure. So this kind of things would be happened a lot in the next uh, few several years. And uh, so I have to skip, but maybe that as for the kind of information I would like to say is that the, basically the vehicle has a sensors and such kind of sensors will make an algorithm and also maps. And then the vehicle can uh, drive, drive driven by, my, by themselves. And the, this type of the uh, flow of the data could be implemented to other solutions like uh, uh, agricultural tractors or drones. And those kind of a data flow will uh, represent the real-time environment or uh, situations of the people's movement or the pa package movement. So such kind of information will be offered to the basically map companies, but also the transportation company like Uber or other traffic or insurance companies or even electric companies. So that this kind of mechanism will, will be uh, implemented. And uh, so such kind of things uh, will change the market. And basically, that, uh, maybe the kind of discrepancy between uh, uh, hardware developers and the website, web-based services will be quite uh, separated. Uh, many competitions will be done on a website. And maybe that uh, business model could be just programmed or written or as a software code. The new business can be easily implemented. And also it could be uh, used by the many, many people, not in uh, advanced countries, but also the advancing countries. But anyway, this kind of structural change will be broadly happened in the future. So that is the last point of myself. And the uh, summary is that I, I may I may not repeat, but the point is that uh, it is very difficult to see, or maybe the uh, point is that uh, ICT would not be advanced in the ICT companies. My point is that the industry, companies in the industry have to uh, expand their knowledge of the ICT to change that structure. So that uh, the future of ICT, information and communication, will be very important, not only for the technology companies, but also the 
various companies or industries have to accept the kind of uh, expertise, or they have to expand the kind of expertise of the uh, ICT knowledge and technology. So that is my point. So thank you very much. Yes, for listening. Thank you.